This video will demonstrate the in-shop assembly of Peerless's model 14 MCF, a four-stage fire pump. Even though other Peerless vertical turbine models may vary slightly by materials of construction, number of stages, setting depth, hollow shaft versus solid shaft, and etc., the basic steps of assembly remain the same. The Peerless Vertical Turbine Pump Model 14MCF 4-stage comes complete with the following parts. Before beginning the assembly, unpack all parts and verify that you have everything you need. One suction manifold. Verify that the bearing has been pre-installed. Four impellers. Depending on your application, the impellers may vary in size. One impeller shaft whose diameter may vary according to your pump's horsepower requirements. Verify that it is straight and free from burrs at the threads. Two sand collars. Check to make sure the set screws are already installed in the holes. The interior of each sand collar should be free from debris. Four taper lock bushings. Bowls 18 inches and larger may use split rings and key for impeller fasteners. The double grooves at the top of these bushings are a code signifying the material from which they are made. Your pumps may have taper lock bushings with one groove or none. Three standard bowls. Here the bowls are shown with the lateral rings that will be installed later in the process. One top bowl. Visually inspect it for damage. Two or more shaft couplings. Inspect that the centering hole located in the middle of each coupling is free from debris. One packing container and accompanying hardware. We will show the assembly of the packing container later in this video. One discharge head. Visually inspect it for damage. Four lateral rings. Check to make sure they are not cracked or worn. Note that lateral rings are required only for Group A pumps and will not be provided on other pump groups. One pipe plug. One top shaft nut. Verify that the top nut is free from burrs inside. One column pipe coupling. One or more carbon steel column pipes. The diameter of the column pipes will depend on your application. One top column flange adapter and accompanying gasket. Check that the holes in the flange adapter are free from debris. Assembly hardware. Amount and size of the studs, nuts, and bolts will depend on your particular pump. One or more line shafts of 5 feet or 10 feet, depending on the particular application. Note that the line shafts differ from the impeller shaft in that they are threaded on both ends. The line shafts may also vary in diameter. To assemble the vertical turbine pump, you will need the following tools. A clean, level workspace 20 to 30 feet in length. A bench and vise. Steel or wooden V-shaped rails for the bowls to rest on. A hammer. A drift pin. A tri-square a beater which can be ordered from Peerless or can be made from a short heavy piece of pipe having an inside diameter slightly larger than the shaft and an outside diameter which can fit inside the small end of the impeller bore an allen wrench a small wedge you may also use a flat tip screwdriver metal file or rasp measuring tape or ruler an air impact wrench a tie-down bolt which can be ordered from Peerless or made from any bolt that will fit into the impeller shaft and a metal plate. Chain tongs, an anti-seize compound in grease, pipe thread sealant. Place the impeller shaft into the vise or wood blocks. Recheck it for straightness and measure it to verify that it has the correct length. Incorrect shaft length will prevent the pumps achieving the required 10-inch stick-up. 
file the bottom end of the shaft to assure a smooth, flat surface on which to place the tri-square when measuring the distance from the end of the impeller shaft to the impeller skirt. Minor scratches on the shaft surface will not affect its performance. Refer to the table of dimensions and clearances included in the Bowl Disassembly Manual, Bulletin 129, to select the appropriate clearances. This dimension will determine the accurate point at which to install the first impeller on the shaft. For our 14 MCF pump with a shaft diameter of 1 and 15 sixteenths, we obtain a clearance of 9 and 3 quarter inches. Measure off 9 and 3 quarter inches from the bottom of the impeller shaft and use a file to make a scratch mark, if one has not already been provided by the factory. This dimension marks the position of the bottom or skirt of the first impeller and is crucial to properly placing the other impellers and bowls. Mount the first impeller on the impeller shaft from the bottom, making sure that the bottom of the impeller skirt is aligned with the scratch mark. If your impellers have the same part numbers, you will install the largest one first. Contact your peerless representative should you have different impeller part numbers or any questions regarding impeller installations. Each impeller is locked into place using a taper lock bushing. Spread the taper lock bushing with a screwdriver or small wedge inserted into the split. Position the bushing on the shaft with the wide end facing away from the impeller and slide it down into the bore of the impeller. Then remove the screwdriver or wedge. Slip the beater onto the shaft and holding the impeller in place, tap the taper lock bushing into the impeller bore. After each tap, move the impeller to again align it with the mark on the shaft. Continue the tapping and adjusting until the taper lock bushing is installed into the impeller and the impeller is snug on the shaft. Measure the clearance again. If the distance is not correct, or if the impeller skirt is not aligned with the scratch mark, you will need to remove the taper lock bushing and reinstall it. To remove the taper lock bushing from the impeller, use the beater to tap it from the opposite side of the impeller. Sand collars are installed to prevent sand from getting into the bushings and wearing the bowls and impellers. Use a rasp to clean the inside of the sand collar making sure no debris is inside that could impede its proper fit on the shaft. With the end of the sand collar that has the set screw toward the impeller, slip the sand collar over the bottom of the shaft and up until it is near the impeller. Insert an Allen wrench into the set screw and give a couple of turns until you feel the screw touch the shaft. You are not yet fixing the sand collar into position just saving yourself a little work for later. Do not push the sand collar into the impeller hub yet. Position the suction manifold flange end up. Using a hammer and drift pin, install the lateral ring into the groove of the suction manifold. These rings are designed to help maintain efficiency over the life of the pump. They also provide protection for the impellers in case of pump failure. Mount the suction manifold on the impeller shaft on the bottom of the impeller with the lateral ring facing the impeller skirt. The suction manifold will push the loose sand collar into place. Now move the shaft back slightly and tighten the sand collar set screw to fix it into place. Reposition the suction manifold so that its lateral ring is again flush against the impeller skirt. FM UL regulations require a pressure test which necessitates the installation of gaskets on the flanges of the suction manifold and bowls. The gaskets are needed only for the factory performed pressure test. Use a brush to coat the suction manifold flange with grease. The grease will facilitate the disassembly of the pump, if needed, without destroying the gaskets. Dipping the gaskets in water improves their flexibility and helps them to stick better to the flanges. Install the gasket on the manifold flange. 
lining up the holes of the gasket with the holes on the flange. Place the first standard bowl flange end up and install a lateral ring into the groove in the same manner as on the suction manifold. Place the bowl on the shaft using care not to damage the threads at the top of the impeller shaft. The end of the bowl that has the holes on the bottom, not the flange, goes towards the impeller. Move the bowl into position aligning the bowl's holes with those of the suction manifold flange. Install only four of the bolts into the bowl flange at this time. We are using an impact wrench here, but any wrench of the appropriate size will be fine. Install only four bolts at this time so that it will be easier to disassemble the pump should that become necessary before assembly is completed. The remaining bolts will be installed later in the process. Before placing the next impeller on the shaft, screw the tie-down bolt into the bottom of the impeller shaft and tighten using an Allen wrench. It is not necessary to over-tighten the tie-down bolt. Use the tie-down bolt to bring the impeller skirt into contact with the lateral ring of the suction manifold and assure the proper positioning of the remaining impellers. It is important that you do not loosen the tie-down bolt until you are finished installing the last stage. Install the second impeller in the same manner as the first. Spread the taper lock bushing and install it on the shaft using the beater. Note that no sand collars are installed in the intermediary stages. Only the first and last stages need them. Use a brush to apply grease to the flange of the first standard bowl and install another wet gasket, again lining up the holes. Position the second standard bowl, flange end up, and install a lateral ring into the groove. Place the second bowl on the shaft again with the flange facing away from the impeller. Move the bowl down the impeller shaft until it comes into contact with the flange of the first bowl. Again, install only four bolts into the bowl. The procedures for the third stage are the same. Install the impeller, open the taper lock bushing, use the beater to install it into the impeller, apply grease to the flange of the second bowl, and install a wet gasket lining up the holes. Situate the lateral ring into the groove of the third standard bowl. Place the bowl onto the shaft, and install four bolts into the bowl. Place the fourth impeller on the shaft and install the taper lock bushing with the beater. Grease the flange of the third bowl and install a wet gasket, lining up with the holes of the gasket with the holes of the bowl. Place the top bowl on the shaft, being very careful not to damage the shaft threads. Install four bolts into the bowl. Measure the stick-up distance from the rim of the top bowl to the end of the shaft. This measurement should be 10 inches, but the allowable range is from 9 and 7 eighths inches to 10 and 1 eighth inches. If the stick-up distance is not within this range, it is because either the shaft length is incorrect or the wrong clearance was selected from the chart in the manual. If the stick-up distance is outside the allowable range, you will need to disassemble the bowls and recheck the length of the shaft. You may also have to reinstall the first impeller according to the clearance given in the chart. If you have further problems with stick-up, contact your peerless representative. You can now remove the tie-down bolt from the bottom of the shaft. Now file the interior of the second sand collar and verify that there are no burrs inside. Place it on the top of the shaft and slide it down as far as it will go until it rests against the top bowl. 
Note that the end of the sand collar with the set screw is pointing away from the top bowl. Tighten the set screw to fix the sand collar into place. Verify that the shaft moves freely in its circular and lateral movements. And push the shaft down as far as it will go. Returning to the bottom of the pump, fill the cavity in the suction manifold with water resistant grease. This will be the only lubrication between the bottom bearing and the shaft. The other bowls do not need grease because they are water lubricated.